What's up guys, how you guys doing? Welcome to the video, I hope you are good. Today we're doing a shootout, a comparison between two cameras. We are comparing a 1000 £450 camera setup and that is the Canon 7D Mark II with the 50mm f1.8 lens with a camera setup that is more than four times the price. That is the Canon 1DX with the 24-70 f2.8 lens. We're going to be comparing the two seeing how they do against each other. We're going to be shooting some basketball, sorry Scorchers game specifically today. Um, this test isn't so much about which camera is better because I think we probably know what the answer to that would be overall, but it's about how they compare. The 1DX with the 2470, we know this is going to take some great images. But how does the 72 with the 50mm compare? Does this hold its own? Does it keep up? Can I go and shoot a pro event and use the two cameras and get images from both that I'm happy with and that I can use for a paid job? I think I can, but let's see how the video goes. I hope this is going to be a good one. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so now this comparison is going to be fairly straightforward. I'm shooting a basketball game today. It's indoor. Um, it means I'm going to need slightly higher ISO levels because the lighting's not great. And I thought that was probably a good environment to do it in because everybody knows one of the big differences between these two cameras is the capability at a higher ISO level. So I thought by doing some basketball indoor, it means I'm going to have to stretch this a little bit. I'm probably going to have to be shooting kind of, you know, 5,000 ISO, 6,400 maybe. Whereas if I was doing like something outdoors in the bright daylight, it wouldn't really compare those because then I'd be totally fine because I wouldn't need that higher ISO level. And in that type of situation, this would keep up with this even better than indoors. So it'd be interesting to see how we go. Now, in terms of the price points that I've referenced, I've done that based on the current, uh, current Amazon pricing if you bought all of this kit new. You could go on Amazon right now, you could buy this camera body um, for, I, I think, just under £1,400, and this lens for about £90. That's where that price point came from. And these two, um, the camera body on Amazon right now is about £4,400, and the lens is about £1,700. Now, of course, you could get all of this gear much cheaper than that. I got all of this gear much cheaper than that, mainly because I bought 90% of it used. I bought this whole setup, camera and body used. Um, I bought this camera body new, actually, but this, in fact, no, this, in fact, this whole setup I bought brand new, um, but, but quite a long time ago now. Those guys who've been watching my videos for a while, you know, I've had that for quite a long time. So the comparison could be varied, like, you know, I mean, God, I could have kind of made it sound more appealing on the video and, and, and priced this new and this one used, in which case it probably would have been like 500 quid. Um, but that didn't feel right. I thought I'd price it all based on an even platform and hence I've picked Amazon. I've also put all the links for all of this in the description below if you want to go check it out um, or pick up anything there. You guys know my view. Um, I tend to buy um, good condition used gear. I don't buy too much like old scrappy used gear. But some of the cheaper stuff you can afford to buy new, you know. The Nifty 50, for example, if you guys haven't got it yet, look, go check it out on that link. It's less than £100 and it's a great lens for low light um, to, to get you started off or even to use at high level events like I'm going to do later on today. Now, in terms of the comparison itself, um, I want to say this isn't going to be like a scientific, you know, kind of breaking down the details and zooming in a hundred times on images. It's not about that. There's plenty of other people who've done that kind of stuff on YouTube. Um, this is more about practical assessments between the two. Can I use the two? Do they compare? How's the image quality? I'm going to show you some images from both of them at the end. Uh, and it's a real life comparison. It's not like breaking down the pixels of each photo or anything like that. This isn't really what this channel's about. This is more about kind of keeping real world photography um, to see how we get on. So first things first, I need to pack all this stuff into a bag and I've got to get going. Um, it's only just over an hour and probably about an hour and a half until the game starts. Um, but I'm only like 15 minutes away from it. I need to get there probably very shortly. So I'm going to leave in the next five minutes. Let's get going over to the venue um, and then we can catch up there. Right, 
guys. Let's do this. Let's see which is better. Well, not which is better. <laughs> Let's see how a 7D2 with a 50mm compares with a 1DX with a 2470. Let's go. Right guys, so we're here. Um, and I think what I said in the car just there is quite important, right? Because this is about how they compare. It's not about which is better, it's about whether or not the cheaper setup can do the job. Because those of you guys who can't quite reach for the expensive option, that's probably the most important piece of info for you. And that includes me, right? You guys know that I've used the one the, the 72 for a long time. I've only recently stretched to the 1DX, and there's nothing wrong with using a cheaper setup when you need to. Sorry, it's noisy, we've got the music on. Uh, about to start, got the two camera bodies set up, ready to go. Got the 70 Mark II with the 50mm, as you know, and the 1DX with the 2470. Be interesting to see how these two setups compare. Um, obviously, I, I kind of know because I use them all the time, but I've never really like properly sat and analysed them side by side like this. So, anyway, it's probably kind of noisy, so let's get into the game. Sorry, I'm a bit close to the camera, so I want to make sure you can hear me. I'm um, organised so far. I've sent in images from both cameras, so you know, so look, so I'm getting good images from both. Uh, I'd be interested to, to obviously get into the detail and have a look at them, but that's it. Really, is the way. By way of an update, let's get into the second half. back to the uh to the car um game's over uh yeah pretty happy i i sent in probably like 50 odd i think it was 48 maybe um images from the game i didn't count exactly like how many came from each camera but it was definitely a mix of the two so um that's a good sign right because it's a suggest that i'm getting images from both that i was happy enough to send in for the job so so that that definitely says kind of step one that the, yeah the cheaper setup can hold up because otherwise i wouldn't have had any images which were usable so that's a, that's a good um good position to be starting in but anyway gonna head home gonna see you guys back in the uh in the office there at home we'll have a look in a bit more detail and we'll see how the photos compare right okay guys back. so we are back um let's check out some of these images let's have a look um see what we think of them i think we're going to be pretty happy with them um i certainly during the course of the event as i referenced earlier i sent off images that came out of both cameras so we've already answered the question can i get images that keep up that i can use for a professional job because yes i did today just now um, and i routinely do kind of every week so didn't surprise me in the slightest but nonetheless, let's log into Lightroom, let's have a proper look at some of these images and let's see what we think. Okay, so you guys can probably tell these images aren't in Lightroom anymore. I, I thought it was a more reflective look to finish them and then show you because in reality you would never show images whilst they're not edited and not finished in Lightroom. So the idea was that I thought I would get them to a stage where I would send them out, because that's the whole idea, right? We're comparing them if they're ready when we send them out. I deliberately haven't said which image these, this, which camera these images are from yet, because I thought I would talk through them first, and then I'm gonna show you afterwards. Don't worry, you guys who are desperate to see. So, two images very similar to each other, slightly different crops, um, but I would say the quality overall on these two images, I would say, is really comparable. And just to give you guys a heads up, one of these is from the 1DX and one is from the 7D2. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you'd say this one's slightly better in the face. It's hard to tell, it's hard to tell. 
two quite similar images these two I would say very similar maybe this looks slightly soft in the face here perhaps you can see a little bit up here as well but overall two pretty comparable images I'm happy with both of those and I, I used both of these just so you guys are aware two similar images again Now I'm looking at this one on full screen. It's actually slightly underexposed over here, but um, but look, I, I, that's that that is what it is. I can deal with that. Maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe it's oh it went the wrong way. Maybe you say this one looks a bit crisper. You can see slightly different color variation between this as well. The white balance is an absolute nightmare in this um, in this particular venue. You have to do a bit of work with it afterwards, but still. Okay. And then again, two very similar images again. One shot with the 1DX, one shot with the 7D2. For me, actually, with this one, it's a bit more obvious. I would say this is the cleaner image, sharper um, between the two. Okay, so right, let's go back to me and I'll show you again, guys, with the um, with which camera this. Okay guys, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the comparison. What I'm gonna do at the end of the video is flash up some of the images um, from both cameras so you can have a look for yourselves and see what you think of them. Um, you, the quality isn't the best on a YouTube video, obviously. Uh, if you check out my Instagram pages, you'll be able to see some of the images from both cameras in a lot more detail. My main Instagram page for this type of photography is at Scorchers Photog. I'll put that on the screen right now. You can still find me on my two other Instagram pages though, at Rob Samples Photo and at Rob Samble Sport. Don't forget to check me out on Twitter as well. I'm at Rob Samble's Photo on Twitter. Go check me out over there. Comment on something on Instagram. Tell me you came from YouTube. It's always cool to see who's come from, um, from my YouTube channel. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, if you enjoyed it, you found it useful, you thought the comparison was interesting, or even if it just helped you pass 10 minutes on your Wednesday night, whack that like button, give me the thumbs up, smash it like you mean it. It means a lot to me and a lot to the channel, so thank you very much if you do. If you're new around here, please do think about subscribing. Loads more videos to come, loads of other videos on my channel you should go and check out as well. I'm sure there's going to be some cool stuff that you will like coming up, so please do think about subscribing if you haven't already. And I think that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys really soon on the next video.